In this video, I'll show how to set up some basic controls for Android and iOS using Unity and Bolt Visual Scripting. Let's begin. Shall we play a game? Before I begin with this tutorial, I just want to say that I heavily utilize Bracky's video on touch controls, and if you haven't watched it yet, I would highly recommend that you check it out because what I'm about to show you using Bolt, he first did using C Sharp. This video comes by special request by King of ROMs, who has repeatedly asked for tutorial video on Android controls. And while I don't necessarily take special requests, I know this is something that King has been looking for for quite some time, and it worked out because I'm actually going to be using this for the direction I'm about to take this channel. I would also like to announce that I've officially launched my Patreon page as well as my own Discord server, and if you enjoy these videos and would like to help support my channel, you can follow the link in the description below. According to the level of your support, you can also have access to early tutorial content, take part in online polls for future tutorial videos, and also have access to my Discord channel where I will be happy to try to answer any questions you might have about any of my tutorials. Since I just launched this, you might be surprised if when you get in there it's just you and me, but hey, if this happens, you'll have my complete attention. You can also find special announcements and a link on my Patreon page to an online tutorial blog that I'll be posting for each of my future videos, including this one. Okay, without further ado, let's get started with this build. In honor of the great King of Roms, I thought it would actually be quite fitting to use a King Sprite image uh, that we'll use for our animations. You can get this from the Unity Asset Store. It's called Medieval King Pack 2. There's a link in the description below. Um, in this video, I'm not going to be showing all how to set up animations, and I'm not going to be showing how to set up the UI button. But if you'd like to know how to do that, go to my Patreon page. You can find a link to this blog post uh, in that and it will give you a step-by-step -step direction for this entire tutorial video but it'll also show you how to set up the scene by importing the king game object as well as setting up a UI button and linking that button to your king game object will I'll show you exactly how to do that in Bolt but this will show you how to set up the animations and um, follow the animator so that you are ready to go as soon as we implement the touch controls. In order to be able to test any changes that you make in Unity, you're going to have to first set up the platform that you'd like to use by going to File, Build Settings, and selecting which one of these platforms you'd like to use. So I'll be using iOS since I have an iPhone, but if you have an Android, just uh, click that. You might have to download these, which it takes, I think, a couple of gigabytes. Uh, it shouldn't take too long, but once you get that downloaded, just select it, and then you're going to hit Switch Platform. Okay, the next thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to connect your phone or tablet of your choice to your computer using a USB cable. Then you're, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the App Store and then you are going to search for uh, Unity. You would go to the Google Play Store if you're using an Android. And the first thing that should come up in the search engine is Unity Remote 5. So you're going to go ahead and download that and once you get it downloaded on your phone, just go ahead and open it up. A special note on um, iPhone devices or uh, any Apple devices, if you're using an Apple device with Windows, um, like I'm using Windows 10, I have a Windows 10 computer, you're going to have to install iTunes on your computer and have it up and running all at the same time. Uh, then you're going to trust your device uh, with your computer or trust your computer with your device. Just make sure that all that is set up and I'll show you how to set up this next part. Once you get your phone connected to your computer, in order to set up touch controls, what you're going to have to do is go to Edit, go to Project Settings, and on the left-hand side, you're going to click Editor, and uh, right over here where it says Device, you should see in this drop-down menu your device once it is connected to the Unity Remote 5. You should see that. I'm using an iPhone 7 because I'm old and out of date, but any device that you have um, should actually work. So just go ahead and close that out. Once you follow those steps, you should be able to go up here and hit play, and you should notice that um, it actually hooks up on your phone. Now, let me just make a special note about UI objects. UI objects, like buttons, are actually already set up to work with touch controls, so that works right out of the box. Uh, so, so for, for example, if you want to set up your movement controller with two buttons left and right and up and down, or you wanted to tack buttons over here, all you have to do is set that up on your UI panel as new buttons, and they would automatically work. If you're curious on how to get your button to actually do something whenever you press it, I actually have this macro set up on the button game object to where when you press it, it uh, fires this little macro right down here that on button click, 
on itself that it will set the animation trigger attack on the player game object, which the player is the king and it's got the tag of player. What if instead of using UI buttons though, we'd like to implement controls anywhere we touch on the screen? Well, in order to be able to do this, you're gonna need to go to your king game object and you're going to need to add a new variable called touch position and it is going to be a vector three. Then we're going to use the following macro. Uh, let me just basically explain what it is that this is doing. So we're running an update to check whether our uh, screen is being pressed anywhere on the screen. And it's automatically going to create a list uh, every time you touch the screen with how many fingers you touch, that's how many it's going to register. So it's going to get the touch count and if it's greater than zero, in other words, if you're touching the screen, then it, what it will do is it will set the touch position to wherever you touched. Now what this is actually doing, um, in your game, everything is measured um, on the panel by pixels, but you want to be able to register with your screen and that is measured by units. So what this is doing is it is converting pixels to units by actually looking at our camera game object. And so it's saying, hey, get the position of the first thing in the list that's being touched. Because remember, lists start with zero. So get the index of zero, the first thing that's being touched, and uh, set the screen to world point position. We're getting the X and the Y while using, uh, leaving the Z alone. Now, why are we doing that? Well, because uh, we're setting the touch position to our screen position on the camera. And because the camera is setting at a negative 10, if we touch the screen, well then our game object would simply disappear. So we're leaving the Z alone and we're just getting the X and the Y and we're setting our touch position on our king game object to wherever we touch on the screen, converting it from pixels to units. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set the position of our king game object to our touch position. With this macro setup, you should now see that wherever you touch on your screen, that is where your king should now move. Cool. Another cool feature you can use is actually lerping the movement. Instead of teleporting all the way across the screen, he'll move wherever you're touching as long as you're touching there. So the way you do that is just add these three units. You're going to use a, a lerp and you're going to run the touch position into B. And for A, you're going to get the actual position of the king game object and you're going to transport it over time dot delta time, which is 50 times a second, I believe. And you're going to run that into the set position. If you're curious what this actually looks like using the lerp function, instead of teleporting on the screen, the king will now follow your finger wherever you press on the screen. What if I don't want my phone to only register one place I touch, but multiple places that I touch? Well, this is actually pretty easy to do. On my king game object, just a special note that I have disconnected the uh, transform position of my player game object there, and I've added a for each loop and I put that in between the screen being touched and pixels to unit grouping and basically what I'm doing is I am getting all the places that I've touched and I'm running that into the index on the input get touch and a good way to visualize this is by using a debug uh, draw line unit here and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag this and put it right here and then off of my touch position I'm going to run the flow into that draw line and um, for the uh, start I'm using the position of my king game object and I'm going to use the touch position as the end point now you can change the color right here but since I'm using an orange screen I'm just going to leave mine as white since it's easier to see and right up here in the top right you can select this little gizmo Mode function so that you can see everything in play mode when you start up your game. So let's check that out and let's see if that works. So uh, let me turn on my video to my screen here and here you see it um, on my phone and wherever I touch on the screen that is also where you see a line in play mode. If you'd like to have a joystick on your screen, Brackies makes a great suggestion. Instead of building a joystick, uh, you can actually go to the Unity Asset Store and download the joystick pack for free. Just add that to your assets and import that into your uh, Unity game. And once you get that in there, you can navigate to the joysticks folder and go to prefabs and grab the fixed joystick and just grab it and drag it into your uh, hierarchy underneath your canvas game object. And once you get that set, it should look something just like that.
In order to get our joystick movement when we touch the screen to register with our game object, you're actually going to need a movement macro, and I'm going to be making use of one that I uh, already made with a 2D player controller. I just modified it slightly. Um, I'm using transform position here, um, so you're going to need to build this macro. Um, you are actually going to uh, make sure that your multiplier and your speed are set to a default value by checking this box right here. And once you get this macro built, you're just going to put this inside a new macro called Joystick Movement. And um, special note on this one, the uh, script that you're going to be using is the script Joystick Get Horizontal that you downloaded from the Asset Store. You're going to need to make sure that your joystick has a tag of joystick or call it whatever you want. You just need it to be the same as whatever you're trying to find with that tag. So I set mine to joystick, so it's going to get the horizontal of the joystick, and whenever it's less than zero, it's going to move to the left, which is why I have that multiplier set to a negative one right there on the x-axis. It's going to move it to the left, and if it's, if it's greater than zero, it's going to move it to the right. I also have it running into an animator bool uh, walking on my uh, king game object. You can check the online blog if you want to know exactly how to do that. And um, then whenever it's zero, I just have it turning the walking bool off and it goes back to an idle animation. Once you get that made, the joystick movement macro, just set that inside your king game object with a fixed update running into the input. Just one thing I forgot to mention, just in case you have a problem calling that joystick uh, get horizontal in your macro, you can go to tools, go to bolt, unit options wizard and scroll down to the bottom hit next and at the very bottom you can actually select that joystick macro if you're having problems with that showing up that might be why just go ahead and hit generate and it will generate a list of things that you can call inside of bolt okay you should now know how to use several touch controls on your mobile device using unity and bolt visual scripting if you enjoyed this video be sure to check out my patreon page and consider supporting the channel hopefully you and king of roms have everything you need to make some great mobile games Thanks for watching, my name is Megahertz, and I'm out.